So, uh, so by reading your research on uh, NAD and its precursors in MM, uh, well, it's really amazing and the result is really amazing. And I think a lot of people is benefit from it. Uh, I'm wondering because uh, just by calculation from the research is a pretty large amount of MM needed uh, for human. So, uh, cause, and this is an endogenous uh, molecules. If we supplement it largely to body daily, would that cause kind of desensitization of body to uh, NMM or its downstream factors, which leads to people need to have, all the mice need to have more and more over the years? Yeah. Well, it, it doesn't seem so. We give the same dose to the mice throughout their old age. Um, and they're less frail. And we've got early evidence that we've got more mice on the way um, that it extends lifespan. But that's that's just early days. I don't want you to uh, tweet that one. But uh, the point is that those mice are not losing their ability to turn NMN into NAD, as far as we can tell. Uh, in the clinical trials we've done, well, at least a month of treatment. I think we've got now got some three month data. Uh, over that time frame in humans, NAD levels uh, go up with NMN. If you take a gram or two grams a day, about twofold in the blood and in the blood cells, and they don't come back down. So I, I think, and we've done dogs as well. Oh, that's preliminary, but it looks like uh, dogs maintain their NAD levels as well for a few months at least. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't think there's anything to worry about in that regard. What I think is more likely is that we need to time it right because NAD levels are cycling during the day in the circadian rhythm. You don't want to mess up your sleep patterns. That can also apparently age you. Uh, but also we want to know how often do you need to take these NAD boosters? And as far as I know, nobody's tried that even in a mouse to try every other day or two times a week. Um, just for lack of money and time, but I think those experiments would be great. Thank you. I think, yeah, I think it's very complex system in the, in the, in the body about of the desensitization. And I think a lot of the signal are very robust and they won't be really affected by external agents. Odin mm -hmm. asking, is there any uh, clinical trial for MMM in the past few years? I think there are lots of them, but could you please briefly elaborate it? Uh, yeah, I mean, the ones I know, the results of, um, there are lots of them that are being put on the uh, clinicaltrials.org, but um, the trials that I've been affiliated with, um, and in full disclosure, it's a company I started called Metro Biotech. Um, they have NMN being dosed to patients that have Friedrich's ataxia, a rare disease, a neurological mitochondrial disorder. Uh, we also have trials in COVID, 30 hospitals, uh, and then also for uh, at the Brigham and Women's Hospital, they're testing uh, muscle endurance and strength. And so those are the trials. We've been doing phase one safety studies for close to three years now in people uh, with uh, Brigham and Women's Hospital group and have had no issues uh, in those patients or those subjects. So that's all I have to report for now, but hopefully in a year from now, I'll have uh, some good news or some bad news to report. Well, we believe there are more and more research and clinical trial on it, and we're looking for good news, not bad news. <laughs> um, yeah.